So when you select two primal binding sites on your gene sequence, so those two sites should cover the entire gene. So when the PCL is amplified, you will have the entire gene sequence. That's important, right? So uh, select 5 prime n and 3 prime n of the prime annealing region in the gene. That is the very important part. Okay, so that both primers will cover the entire amplification region. Okay, that's important. And the primer uh, sequence itself, okay, so I, I told you about 21 nucleotides. Yeah, that's fine. Well, between 21 and 25 nucleotides are good. Okay, and since you are covering the entire gene sequence, of course, the first start codon and the last stop codon should be within the primer sequence at least. So you will have the entire gene sequence within your PCR product, right? And then, this is the most important part. When you uh, come up with the primer sequences, you have to remember that your DNA is made out of two strands. Okay, One is coding strand, the other is um, non-coding strand. So their sequences are complementary to each other. Okay, So your primer, one of the two primer, may have a gene sequence. Okay, But if that's the case, your the other primer, may not have the same gene, uh, the gene sequence. Instead, it may have a complementary sequence to your gene. So that's how both primer will uh, amplify out both strands of DNA. That is the very important part. So that, does it make sense? So if you go back to uh, your gene sequence here, for example, let's say you want to use that as your first primer sequence, starting from ATG. So that's your 5 prime and W primer, starting from there. Okay, and then it stops there, and that means this prim primer will bind on a non-coding strand because that's five prime n is going to bind on uh, a non-coding strand. By doing so, it, when it amplifies, the end of the primer uh, will host these nucleotides continuously. So the five prime n will go continuously through the, this sequence and it will amplify out uh, the strand of the DNA that has this sequence. Okay, so that will be the case. So that's a 5 prime n, 3 prime n, the primer. That's good for this primer sequence, right? But how about the opposite primer that should come from that side to this direction? Okay, so that should be the 5 prime end of the primer and that should be 3 prime end of the primer and it should go this direction. Okay, because you know DNA two strands are what anti-complementary. Okay, so if one strand has that oriented five prime n to three prime n, it goes that direction. But the other strand will have totally opposite orientation. Five prime n will be here. It's going to go to this side to three prime n. Okay, so the opposite primer should not have the same sequence as this gene sequence. Instead, it should have Okay, complementary sequence to, to that, and then orientation should be the 5 prime n should be that, should be here. So actually the primer sequences you're going to have will be, um, if I type up uh, here, so let's say that's a 3 prime n of the primer, okay, then you will have the T will match up with what? Uh, so I'm going to go a little further, right there. So the T will match up with A there. Right, and then A will match, match up with T, T, and G will match up C, and uh, what A will match up with T, A A, C, and G G, uh, T, uh, T, C C, uh, T, G, A, T T, and that's going to be the five prime end there. Does it make sense? So that will be the primer sequence. Uh, it's going to bind right there. And then it's going to, uh, when it's uh, amplifying, that end will will be the side of the amplification. So you will have G added to there, C added to there, C, A. It's going to go continuously that, to that direction. Okay, so if I just write um, the direction of amplification, amplification, it's going to go continuously towards that direction. Okay, so put an arrow there. So yeah, so that's going to be that. Okay, so actually that should be the sequence of your primer. The second primer will have that sequence. Okay, And then this primer, uh, if you want to use that as a primer sequence, you're going to have that 5 prime n, and then and uh, 3 prime n will have that sequence. Okay, So that's the first primer. That should be the second primer sequence. That's how you're going to decide the sequence of your primers. Okay, So that 
is explanation for that last statement there. Okay, hope that makes sense. If not, we can work together on this. Okay, so once you chose your primer sequences, uh, okay, you need to do some analysis. Okay, and look at the primer sequence and make sure that primer sequence length is big enough. Like, like I said, if it's too short, you tend to have the random priming site, random binding site. That's not good. So at least should be like 21 nucleotide long. Okay, to be specific to its binding site only. So the size of the primer matters. Okay, and then when when they are binding, like here, first primer, second primer. Okay, what will be the expected size of the PCR products? Of course. So primer will be uh, uh, included in the part of the PCI product that you're going to amplify out because it's going to continue from the primer binding side and it's going to the replication will continue. So this primer will result that strand with this sequence. But this primer will result from here. It's going to go continuously, but the opposite strand that have the complementary sequence. That's how you can make uh, double strand DNA. One primer making one strand, the other primer will making will be making the other opposite strand. Okay, so if you count uh, the number of nucleotide between those two primer binding sites, that will be the uh, size of the PCR product from here to here. Okay, so that's how you can expect the size of the PCR product. Okay, and then how about the melting temperature? Okay, how do you figure out at what temperature your primer will not uh, bind, so it's going to melt away from its binding site? Okay, I told you the primer binding uh, temperature will be uh, melting temperature minus five, right? So mathematically, yeah, here's the equation that you can use to calculate out your melting temperature. If you look at the sequence of a primer, okay, four times all the number of G's and C's you have in your primer sequence, okay, and plus two times all the numbers of A's and T's you have in your primer sequence, okay, and if you add them up together, that's going to be the melting temperature. Okay, for for example, here in, within your primer, how many A's and T's do you have? So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 A's and C's, right? So 11 times 4 is 44, okay, plus how many G's and C's do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 G's and C's. So 9 G's and C's, um, where is the occasion? So G's and C's, I'm sorry, 9 G's and C's, it's 9 times 4. So 36, 36 plus 2 times 11, so 22. 22 plus 36 is what, 50, 58, 58 degrees in Celsius. It will be the melting temperature for this primer, 58 degrees. So if you're going to use this primer to set up a PCR, so primer binding temperature should be what, 58 minus 5 which will be what 53 degrees in Celsius that will be the primer binding uh, the temperature okay and that's how you can figure out the melting temperature and primer binding temperature okay and the force priming side yeah yeah any uh, DNA sequence that is similar to your primer binding cell the force priming sites okay so you want to avoid that and then lastly important thing is the secondary structures Okay, helping structure, the primer is, is folding up by itself, and primer dimer structures. So, can it fold up by itself? Does it have a lot of you know matching sequence within the primer? Okay, or this primer can bind with another primer that has the same sequence. Okay, those are secondary prime uh, the binding uh, structure secondary uh, primer structures that may give you a problem. So these things should be all analyzed. Okay, how do you do that manually? Uh, the answer is you have a software that can help you. Okay, so I told you what are the names of the softwares. So Oligo Analyzer like this, Oligo Amplifier Analyzer. So the software that you can use. Actually, there are free software on the website. Uh, so I'm going to show you th those. Uh, at, at the end of this lab, so you will uh, do the analysis in both of the primer. So let's say maybe that is the first primer sequence of, of mine, and that is the second primer. You will do the analysis uh, on those primers. And once you fi finish the analysis, you will know uh, that what primer binding temperature you're going to use. Okay, primer binding temperature will be uh, the lower only temperature between two primers. Okay, and then based on that you will come up with the PCR condition. Okay, 
the natural temperature is pretty much set about 95 uh, degrees Celsius about one minute only temperature will determine based on your primary analysis and how about extension temperature it's pretty much set as well 72 or 74 degrees Celsius for about one minute okay so th that'll be your assignment so you're gonna at the end that's you don't have to send me you have you have to have to upload your primer sequences analysis and PCR cycle and then expected size of PCR product uh, from your core shell that's gonna be your assignment so then uh, before that and then let's talk about this analysis how you gonna do so if you do a Google search let me show you how you can do a Google search so let's 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 start from the Google Okay, if you do a Google search and on the topic of oligoanalyzer, for example, if you type it up, oligoanalyzer, okay, then it'll show you the possible oligoanalyzers that you can use from uh, the internet. Okay, so out of this, I want you to use the one from IDT. It's the name of the company that makes uh, primers for you. You can design it and you can contact this company and this company will make the primer for you. So cl click that oligoanalyzer tool. Okay, so this is a company website. So in order for you to be able to use this oligoanalyzer tool, uh, I think you have to get registered. So you can just sign up, um, you know, uh, to use it. So if you click on the start using oligoanalyzer, see what happens. Okay, because I already signed up, I have my username and password. But if you don't have that yet, click on register, and you can just you know fill in uh, some you know. Um, information, your information like your login name. You can come up with some login name for yourself. Password. You can create your own confirm password, and then your first name, some personal information, email address, your personal email address. Give that. It's fine. They don't do anything. They just you know send some monthly information. That's all they do. Um, PI information. You can type up my name. That's fine. Ivy Tech, you can type up, and that's fine. And if you do, once you do that, you will get registered, and you can start using their website. That's fine. Okay. Let's say you did that, and then oops, I lost that. I'm sorry, I did T. I'm going back to their website. Um, yeah. So once you read, read I'm sorry. I'm the wrong site, so not the Sigma. Where is the IDT website? Yes, this one. Okay, so once you signed in, uh, registered, you can sign in, and then it'll allow you to use the Oligo Analyzer, right? So I hope you did that, okay? Then once you have the website, now you can type in the sequence of your primer there, okay? So let's, uh, let me show you how you do that. Uh, let's say this is about 13 minutes long, so I'm going to stop and continue, okay? Um... Uh -huh. 